Hey guys and welcome to my channel. I am Engineer Chirenge. So today the topic we're going to be talking about is crop water requirement. So what is crop water requirement? Crop water requirement is the measure of the quantity of water irrespective of its source at a given time that is needed or required by a crop for growth and development under available field conditions and also climatic conditions. So that's it for crop water requirement and the sources of water can be if effective rainfall which is the amount of rainfall that is going to be used particularly by the plant so it subtracts uh, all the runoff losses and deep collision losses so this is actually the water that the crop is actually going to use and another source of water can be irrigation most of the people if the effective rainfall cannot meet the crop water requirement they supplement it by irrigation and another one is groundwater contribution this usually is negligible because the root zone depth of most crops cannot attain water until from a groundwater source but it's actually another source of water when it comes to to crops that has deep really deep roots or when in areas where the water table is quite high so how can we measure crop water requirement so the only way we can measure crop water requirement is via evapotranspiration which is actually a loss of water from soil under the crop surface area by evaporation and by transpiration from the leaves uh, of the plants growing so that's the basic definition of uh, uh, evapotranspiration. So the evapotranspiration be becomes the product of the climate effect values and the crop uh, effect values. So it is going to be represented by the equation ETC is equal to ET0 multiplied by KC where ETC is the evapotranspiration rate and ET0 is the reference evapotranspiration and KC is the crop coefficient. So what is ET0? ET0 is a representation of the maximum potential evapotranspiration rate that can occur and it is determined by the climatic factors such as wind speed, sunshine, humidity and temperature. In, in areas where the wind speed is high, definitely the evapotranspiration rate is going to be more and whereas in areas where the wind speed is low, there is going to be low evapotranspiration rate occurring and when it comes to sunshine, more sunshine hours means more time to more time for evaporative transpiration rate to okay whereas if we have less sunshine hours little or actually very few uh cases of evaporative transpiration rate uh, can okay and when it comes to humidity in areas where it is very humid evaporative transpiration rate is very low and in areas where it is less humid evaporative transpiration is high and when it comes to temperature to higher uh, areas with high temperatures experience high evapotranspiration rate whereas areas with low temperatures experience also less uh, evapotranspiration rate so that's it that's uh, ET naught so we actually can calculate ET naught by relating this uh, climatic factors in a linear equation the best way to calculate ET naught is by penman monteith method we also have evaporation uh, pan we can actually calculate it through evaporation pan but it's not um it's not uh, that good because it doesn't cover it doesn't uh, input all the factors the climatic factors that needed to be included but the penman monteith uh tries to to cater for all the climatic effects that can actually affect um et naught However, the crop water requirement is actually less than the uh, potential evapotranspiration rate. This is because of the KC value, which is the crop coefficient value. That means the crop actually plays part in uh, the amount of water it actually requires. For example, we have factors like uh, the crop uh, type. In a way, when we have leafy crops, which means they have more surface area for evapotranspiration rate to okay. Whereas uh, we have uh, plants for the desert which are very thorny and they don't have leaves, which means they are providing less surface area for transpiration rate to okay. And also we're going to be talking about the crop growth stage. 
So when the plant is still little, we have less surface area, the leaves are so small, there is less transpiration or carrying and we are actually applying less water. So more water cannot be evaporating because we are applying still less because the crop requires little water by that time. So the evapotranspiration rate is definitely very low during that stage. But as the plant matures, we experience more evapotranspiration rate or carrying. But when the phase go down, like the plant has like the plant has actually matured enough and we are about to harvest it the leaves are dry there's no transpiration or carrying and maybe sometimes we won't be applying water by that time because it will damage the crop but our that means evapotranspiration rate by that time is actually less so these are the factors that actually affect the kc values so now that we know the potential evapotranspiration rate and the crop coefficient values, now we can multiply these factors and come up with the actual evapotranspiration rate. So the goal of finding the crop water requirement is that we don't stress water stress our crops and then we can attain the maximum yield possible and the appropriate uh, estimation of this crop water requirement also helps in better planning of water resource projects and proper design of irrigation systems so because it actually eliminates over irrigation hence better water use efficient and conservation of irrigation water as a result more, more water availability for industry and other sectors so this is a big win if we know our crop water requirement we're gonna be eliminating all most of the most of the water losses because we'll be applying exactly what the plant needs and um, these are the softwares that you can find that can help you calculate the crop water requirement, crop what, clean what, isareg and gisareg. So thank you. Bye. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed the video.